There's many ways to save data. Layer press might be one of them, but you probably shouldn't use it. Let's talk about that in this video. Alright, we found us back in Unity once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about player prefs. Now, you might have heard that player prefs are a easy and awesome way to save data, and while that might be true, you should be very wary of some common pitfalls. Now, I'm going to draw you to the player prefs Unity documentation here as the first thing. Now, the player prefs is a class that stores player preferences. It specifically says they are preferences between game sessions. You can, of course, use this to also save other things. However, it specifically says that Unity stores the player prefs in a local registry without encryption. Do not use player prefs data to store sensitive data. Let's not even talk about passwords because passwords have to be stored in a completely different way. But here in this case, Unity prefs really should only be for preferences for players. So, for example, resolution or just the general options menu, for example, that can be easily saved in player prefs. But the actual game state, so like how much HP the player has, where the player is, while it can be saved in player prefs, does not mean that it should. So while right now I will show you an example of how you can actually use player prefs, I highly recommend you don't use them for anything related to the game state and only for exactly what they're called for, for the preferences of the player. So for the fictional example that I've come up with right here is maybe your player can choose the speed of the player, right? So there's some sort of options menu somewhere where the player can actually change the speed of the actual player character, and you now want to save that. The question is, why would this be an apt example? Well, if this is ever reset because the data is lost, honestly, that's not going to be too much of an issue, right? Similarly, if there's some options that might be lost, yeah, it could be annoying to go back and change those options again, like keybinds or similar things like that. However, when you really think about it, is it that big of a deal? Not really, versus if you're like eight hours into a game and then all of a sudden your entire game file is lost, that will probably sting a little bit more. So for this, for the sake of argument, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new empty object over here. We're going to call this the player refs saving over here. And we're going to center it at 000. zero. And we're going to make a new script over here in scripts. And I have already created a new folder for this. I'm going to make a new C sharp script over here. We're going to call this the prefs example one here in this case, because we have a second example in just a little bit. But let's first of all do this. So let's just add the player prefs example here to our empty game object. And the idea is that we're going to basically, when we press a button, we're going to read out the speed of the player and actually save that in the player prefs. So how do we do this? So first and foremost, we of course need a serialized field here for the player. So we're going to have a private player movement, right? So this is going to be our player movement here in this case. There we go. And then what we can do is we can basically say if input dot get key down, we're going to say key code. We don't, we're not going to use escape. We're going to use the space over here to save something. So if space is pressed, we simply want to save player prefs. So here we're going to save the player prefs. So number one, we're going to debug.log and actually saying saving player prefs. Then have to do to actually save this is very easy. You just call player prefs dot set int. You're just going to call this, for example, speed. And the value is going to be player movement dot speed, which right now we can't access. We're going to change that. So we're just going to we're going to control click on this to open this class. And I'm just going to change this to public. Yes, making a getter is probably going to be a bit better, but for the time being, but for demonstration purposes only over here, I think making this public is going to be okay. Oh, and this is actually a float. So this actually has to be set float. There you go. That's going to be okay. So now we've set a float with the name speed to this value over here that we have saved in the player movement script. For the sake of argument, we of course also have to read this out somehow. So we're going to say if input.get key down, and we're not going to use return, but what we are going to use is let's say something like L for load, right? I feel like that's fair enough. We then want to set the speed again. So we're going to say player movement speed is equal to player prefs dot get float, and we want to get the float speed over here. And then the default value is just going to be three. If it can't read anything in, then it's going to just set it to three. And we can also add a debug log here. And we're going to say loading player prefs. There you go. So now let's go back into Unity. And in the player prefs over here, we now have to just define the player, right? So this is the player movement script that it basically refers to. Let's now go into our game. And we are now, of course, speed three, right? Let's change the speed to eight, right? So we're zooming around over here. Now I'm going to press the space key. And you can see we have now saved the player prefs. If I now go outside of the game, right, I just, I go along my merry day and I come back in the evening. I'm like, oh, I want to replay my favorite game over here. So notice the speed right here. I press L, bam, it gets turned to eight immediately. And there we go, because the value has been read in from the player press. And the first thing that you're going to probably say is that, well, it works absolutely amazingly. Why wouldn't I want to do this? 
The issue is that the player profs are saved in the registry, meaning that you have basically almost no way of sharing your save data anywhere, number one. Number two, moving PCs basically guarantees that whatever you save in the player profs is gone forever. And another big restriction is it can only store strings, floats, and integers. And while yes, those make up the majority of data types, any more complicated object has to be broken down into these things, and that is going to be very complicated very quickly. For completion's sake, I have another example that I will link in the description below. That is a Unity package, and you can basically get this in. It's called the Player Prefs Cart Scene with Code over here. And if you import it, you're going to get a really cool scene. That is this scene right here, which basically has different cards as well as some player data. And if I just were to run this, you can see what I can do is bas I can basically select a card right here. I'm going to change the card right here. So let's say I'm going to select, I don't know, card 36 here. And maybe the HP is actually 15, MP is like 256, and then XP is like 89. I can now save the data. And if I click on this, now it has saved the data in the player prefs, right? And I go out of this, I come back over here. It's going to reset everything. However, if I load data, bam, everything is back like I saved it. Now you might say, well, this is once again a great idea to do it like this. If we take a look at the save data, save player prefs script over here. Currently, this is the script. Now you might say, well, that's that's totally fine, right? That's okay. So we have an integer over here, right? We're setting an integer here, here, and here, right? Basically setting the HP, the MP, the XP, and the card index, and then we're loading it again. Like, that's, that's totally fine. That's normal. And while I might agree with you, let's say now your task would be, okay, now save the actual position of the player. So you now want to save the float of the position X, Y, and Z. So now you've got to set four, three integers for that. And then you got to set another three integers for the rotation, another three integers for the scale, because there's no way to just put in a transform and be like, I'll just, you know, convert that transform into a way that we can basically read this. So it's probably better to think about a more future-proof way that we can save data. And amazingly enough, there actually is one and it's called JSONUtil. And we're going to talk about it in this video right here. Hope to see you there. So yeah.